Hello and welcome to Black Pearls, Distinguished Women of Color, the channel where we celebrate the achievements and contributions of black women from all walks of life. In this video, we will explore the life and work of Gwendolyn Brooks, a poet and teacher who was the first African-American to win the Pulitzer Prize for poetry. Gwendolyn Brooks was born on June 7, 1917, in Topeka, Kansas, but moved to Chicago with her family when she was six weeks old. She grew up on the south side of Chicago in a neighborhood that became known as Bronzeville, a vibrant hub of black culture and activism. She began writing poetry at an early age, inspired by her mother, who was a school teacher and a pianist. She published her first poem in a children's magazine when she was 13, and by the time she graduated from high school, she had published more than 75 poems in various newspapers and magazines. Brooks attended junior college and worked as a secretary and a reporter while continuing to write poetry. She joined the Chicago Defender, a newspaper for the black community, and became part of a group of writers known as the Chicago Black Renaissance. She also participated in poetry workshops led by influential poets such as Langston Hughes and Richard Wright. She married Henry Blakely in 1939, and they had two children, Nora and Henry Jr. Brooks published her first collection of poems, A Street in Bronzeville, in 1945. The book received critical acclaim for its realistic and compassionate portrayal of the lives of ordinary black people in her neighborhood. She followed it with Annie Allen in 1949, a book that traces the life of a black girl from childhood to adulthood, exploring themes such as identity, racism, love, and war. Annie Allen won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1950, making Brooks the first African-American to receive this prestigious award. Brooks continued to write prolifically throughout her career, producing more than 20 books of poetry, fiction, children's literature, and autobiography. Some of her notable works include Maud Martha, 1953, a novel about a black woman's struggle for self-fulfillment, The Bean Eaters, 1960, a collection of poems that reflects her growing social awareness, In the Mecca, 1968, a long narrative poem about a mother's search for her missing child in a rundown apartment building, and Blacks, 1987, an anthology of her poems from 1953 to 1987. Brooks was also a dedicated teacher and mentor to young writers, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds. She taught at various colleges and universities, such as Columbia College Chicago, Northeastern Illinois University, Elmhurst College, Columbia University, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. She also conducted poetry workshops in schools, libraries, prisons, and community centers. She founded the Gwendolyn Brooks Center for Black Literature and Creative Writing at Chicago State University in 1990 and supported several literary awards and scholarships for emerging poets. Brooks received many honors and recognitions for her achievements. She was appointed as the Poet Laureate of Illinois in 1968, a position she held until her death in 2000. She was also named as the Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress, now known as the Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry, for the 1985-86 term. She was the first black woman to be elected to the National Institute of Arts and Letters in 1976 and the first black woman to receive the National Medal of Arts in 1995. She also received more than 50 honorary degrees from various institutions. Gwendolyn Brooks died on December 3, 2000, at the age of 83, in Chicago. She left behind a legacy of powerful and inspiring poetry that speaks to the human condition and the black experience. She also influenced generations of writers who followed her footsteps and admired her courage and creativity. As she wrote in one of her poems, we are each other's harvest, we are each other's business, we are each other's magnitude and bond. Thank you for watching this video about Gwendolyn Brooks, one of the most distinguished women of color in American literature. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share more videos about Black Peels.
See you next time.